What to do? It's your boy Bell's Boy Black, and I just skipped class with the Progress Report. Let's do it. The Progress Report. All right, what's going on? It's your girl Lala Shepard. This is a new episode of Skipping Class presented by the Progress Report. I'm super, super excited for this episode, man. Um, my homegirl hit me up, and I'm like, shit, let's make it happen. So when I was doing my research on you, um, I'm like, damn, like, you got a very interesting story. So I just want to take it from the top to talk about your journey as to you getting here today. All right? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it, man. We got Bezel Boy Black in the building. So, um, you know, first I want you to, of course, talk about your upbringing in Memphis. What did a typical day look like for you as a kid? Uh, well, as a kid, just chilling, you know. Probably school, out of school, homework, go outside, kick it with the friend for about two. You know, your mama say don't let the don't don't let the streets light beat you. So before the streets light come on, we back in the house. For sure. Just chilling. Hell yeah. What type of student were you in school? I won them all around because I was making good grades, but I was on like bad as hell. Yeah. Like I I I tried to be the class clown. <laughs> for real. Yeah. Where did you graduate? Nah. What what age did you stop going? Wow, seventeen. I waited the last minute. Got but you. It was some some crazy shit happened. I couldn't even. I wasn't even focused no more. Damn. What happened? If you don't mind me asking. I got shot. Damn, that was young as fuck. Yeah. Got you. Okay. So I know you got a daughter now, right? Yeah. Okay. So talk about you know. How is her childhood different and similar to yours? Uh, she in a big house. She ain't missing no meal. She uh, iPad, you know, we weren't having iPad. We barely were having iPhone back then. When we were young, we were having track phone. So she she just, she way different. She ain't missing a shoe. Like, she, she different. For sure. Did having a daughter change you at all? It 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 it, it ain't changed me, but it changed the way way I think. Mm. Like, cause sometimes I got a bad attitude, so sometimes that be on some. And I think like, nah, I don't do it. I still got to do it to go home to. For sure, that's real. Okay, so like with your upbringing though, like one might be like, damn, you had a famous dad, country black. So how'd you end up in the streets? Yeah, he he, he your daddy. He, he want, he want this. Yeah, he want. I had my mama. I ain't have my dad. Got you. Okay. Yeah. So like you know, country. He got a, a huge personality, yeah. and he openly you know talk about pimping women and shit. So what was it like for you? Like, was you around that or? I didn't see that. Okay. Did people? Did people treat you different? Do you feel like? No, nah, I feel like you treat the same. But I have ran across a couple people who were trying to. Mm. You know, treat treat me different because who who uh, who my dad is. So. For sure. Um. Okay. Um. What's your relationship like now? He cool. For sure. What he think about you rapping? He fuck with it. Yeah, I got me. He ain't never just gave me no tips on like mm. do this, do this, but he 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 be happy. For sure. Do y'all have any music together? Yeah. Okay. Some old okay. Respect. Um, what's your relationship like with your siblings? I fuck with all my folk. For we sure. Lock. Definitely. All my people locked in. For sure. What's it like being the oldest though? I ain't the oldest. Are you not the oldest? Are you the oldest boy? Uh, no. I'm the middle child. The middle. Oh, so how was it like growing up as the middle child? I got favor too. Really? Yeah, like I was the one got all everything. I mm. got my way. Okay. That's crazy. I feel like it's usually the youngest child. See, it it's like tip for tat with us. Like it's still like that to this day. Like, mm. Still like this. Yeah. It just like type of mom I got like she know all her kids, so yeah. she know she t- she tell them, like it's a certain amount of attention like. I got to show him this type of thing. He likes shoes and clothes, and mm. he like, yeah, he like shit like that. For sure. Describe your mom and just like talk about some things that she taught you directly and indirectly. Like she just, like my mom taught me how to hustle. Like my mom taught me like, like 
when it all boiled down, you ain't got nobody but yourself. So, like, at the end of the day, you got to make sure, like, before you got anybody else, make sure you got yourself. Like, it's mm. cool to help other people out. Like, it's cool to do this and that for other people, but make sure you got yourself hurt. Feel that. Yeah. Um, I want you to talk about grief, too, man. I think, you know, a lot of times we just normalize, like, just losing people to gun violence and stuff like that. But I know you lost, you know, a few people close to you. Yeah. Um, how do you deal with grief? Um, like, I, I, I ain't gonna lie, I be angry. Like, I don't, because I don't cry. Mm. So... Like, it just, like, built up my anger, but, like, to release that, I go to the studio, put it on the beat. I feel that. I feel that, man. Um, and I know earlier you mentioned you got shot, then you got shot a second time, right? Yeah. So, talk about the recovery process for both. Shit, I really, really want, like, I got shot the first time, a few days, I was gone out the hospital, just patch on, on my face. Just let it heal. Second time I got shot was in like my um, I think like two days I was at the hospital. Now I left the hospital the same night. Mm. I chilled in the house for about two days. I was back at the court hooper. <laughs> like trying to make my arm extend. Cause Damn. I, I really just had to jump just up. Mm. So I just got to going back out there shooting the ball from the half court. Damn. But I had it wrapped up. So every time I get to trying to shoot, like it would bleed. Oh, God. But Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't. I got I got some people who got shot like in certain spots, like they um, like they shit stuck. Yeah, so I wasn't trying to get stuck. Like that was my word for. I got you. So okay. I was trying to move it around. Right. That makes sense. Damn. Okay. So, um, getting into music, do you feel like is it is it difficult knowing that your, your dad is who he is? Like, do you feel like it's difficult building your own name outside of him? Or it is. It is. But but. Like, I'm I'm doing it. Like I'm oh, for doing sure. it. It for sure is because I I was just scrolling on TikTok last night, and I just keep seeing folks like y'all know this crunch bass on or this crunch bass. I don't want to be known by that. Like, I'm Bill's boy black. For sure. Yeah. And that's the thing. That's why I said I want to take it from the top. Like I don't want to just keep asking you about yeah. your dad. But it's also important to get insight and perspective because like a lot of people grew up listening to him so that's gonna give people more insight as, as to who you are too you get what i'm saying yeah. so okay so who did you come up listening to who was you listening to when you was younger and still now when i was younger i had a lame ass favorite rap when i was younger like I, I was fucking with like i was on crazy ass shit ludicrous Chinky on some crazy ass. What? But they, they weren't like, I was just bumping them because I like felt the type of shit they were talking about. Like, yeah. Chinky had a song about a female he had a crush on. I was crushing back then. So, shit, I was bumping this song. That's Luda funny. Chris used to do all type of little different shit in his videos. Facts. So I was watching them. But I ain't just had like a favorite rapper. Them just folk I was bumping. But now it's like, Money bag, big homie G, little baby, fat, and my people. For sure. I fuck with them. Definitely. Um, how'd you get your artist name? I had a little brother. He wasn't my biological brother, but we close as hell. We went to a house party. Mm. And he ended up getting killed and his name was Belza. Damn. So when he when he died, we made like a little group called Belza Boys. Mm. And you know my name was already black, so I just added the black to the end. For sure. I just took that nine around with it. For sure. For sure. Um, so I heard that you had got into rapping after you was, you know, in jail pretty much. Yeah. And people was paying you commissary to hear you rap. Yeah. So like what made you be like, man, let me let me let me let me try to rap. Like what made you get in that mode to even try to do that? So like I had I had wrote this rap when I first got in there just like when I first got in jail I was on lower level twenty three and one. Mm. And I had this silly. And I really started off finna write a letter. When I'm in my head, like I'm like, man, I'm not finna be here that long. I ain't finna send no letter out. So I just got the I'm like, fuck it, I'm finna try to write a song. So but I wrote the song and I, I went over to every day like while I was on lower level. So I ended up getting on the flow and seen some some folk I knew from like on on the town. Mm. And I had pulled them to the side, like, bro, listen to this. And I rapped it, like, damn, that shit hard. 
So later on that night, like everybody laying down and shit, they chilling. He get up, call my night, like, bro, rap that rap. I'm like, shit, like this is my first time in jail, so I'm like, how the fuck you want me to do it? You want me to scream? He like, yeah. So I got the rapper, and shit, everybody got standing up on their ball, like, who it is? He was like, this 18 said. They like, bro, this shit hard as hell. But I still was on some just chilling. So like every day, like I looked up, I was in there a year. Mm. So every day I got to write little different raps. And it had got to a point where I wrote this song called The Judge When Me Gone. And it was like a humming song. It wasn't like rapping, like it was like on Kevin Gay type shit. Mm. And they got the pan. Like I I remember one of my niggas, you know, Star, he's still locked up. He's like, my female wanna hear this song. Wow. He gave me the phone, I rapped the song. Then he got to a point where they got to slide me noodles, pop tarts, Kool-Aid packages, like got to pay me. So I'm like, when I get out shit, if I can get paid for this, like commissary is money in jail. Hell like, yeah. This shit worked a lot. So I'm like, if I can get paid this in here, if I can get out and rap, I'd be cool. I got out, went live, and ended up going viral. Mm. But back then, I wasn't doing it for the money. I was just doing it for the viral moments. Like, I was currently uploading videos on Facebook, tagging 100 people. Wow. That's what's up, man. So, okay, recall that first time you got in the studio, like, when you got in the real studio, whether it was, like, just, you know, a uh, closet. I don't know what your first uh, experience was, but, like, did you like how you sounded on the mic and stuff? Uh, my first time getting in the studio... I don't remember. I don't remember like how I felt, but I was fucking with it because everybody was like, bro, this shit hard. Yeah. And I had shot the video at like a club and like everybody was in the video moving around and shit. Mm. So I was cool. For sure. Um, now, knowing your bio, it still says unsigned, but are you signed? It's a mystery. <laughs> <laughs> shit coming soon. They finna figure it out. Okay. All right, so let's get into, you know, this tape you got with Endless ENT called We Connected, man. Yeah. You got a couple of songs on there. I would say my personal favorite right now is that No Point. I like right. that beat. I like how you ride that shit. So talk about, you know, um, learning that y'all was doing a compilation uh, project. Shit, they just hit me like, my boy Camario hit me like, hey, hey, Bills, I need a few songs. I'm finna, we finna put out this mixtape. Mm. Like in my head, like, I'm thinking, nah, oh, shit, I'm finna do it like that. Ain't nothing. So I was like, the next few songs I record, I'm just gonna send them to you. You pick, but shit, them the first two I sent, he fuck with them. He like them whole perfect. Yeah, yeah. He's like yeah, yeah, them whole perfect. So I'm like, shit, nah. Right. And shit, I had already had nothing about nothing with me, G and uh, Fat. Yep. So shit, I had. They put them three on there. Them motherfuckers going up. Nah, See, I ain't sure. know the tape was finna. That like, motherfucker real did do a number. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Nah, for sure, man. It was crazy. I, um, when Moneybag Yo at first came to Atlanta, him and um, the the CEO of Endless, I gave him their first interview a minute ago. Yeah. And it's like, when I I just knew it, just hearing it, I'm like, bro, this nigga Moneybag Yo different. So yeah, everybody in the crew like got their own style. Y'all got your own style. You know what I mean? It's a real roster. Like, it's yeah. The roster crazy as hell. So, okay, what would you say is like the biggest sacrifice that you had to make so far to become a, a full-time rapper? Like just leave my daughter. Mm. Cause like she, she, like she know, like if my baby mama piss her off or if my mama piss her off, she call my, she too. She oh my called goodness. Dad she, she smart as hell. You think she about three or four. She called that ass. And then when, she, when they call, she like, she real deal snitching on them. <laughs> <laughs> like real deal. That's it's funny like, as hell. My baby mom called me the other day. Like, she take my daughter to the store and she like, my daughter asked for chips and shit. She like chips. My baby mom like, nah, you don't need no chips. <laughs> she, my baby mom like, she just got the screaming and stuff. Like, I ain't just stop whooping me. What? <laughs> like, the, uh... like she fucked up. Like she fucked up. So Damn. It's like, like she know like, daddy gon' like she know. Facts. So it just be like leaving her. Like, it'd be sure. sometimes she'd be on the phone, I'd be like, I'm from the bye-bye, she'd get to crying. Mm. Like, she know. Yeah, that's tough. So be, I feel like when she get older, it's gonna get better. Yeah. Yeah. She gonna be with me when she get older. Oh, no, for sure. When for she, sure. I can't change pounds, none of that. Nah, for sure. With that, uh, she learned how, she, she going to the pot, but, like, we need to be consistent. Like, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so, what's your thoughts on the current state of hip-hop and trap music right now? 
Uh, what you mean? Like, like which, 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 how do you feel about the music of today? Like, I fuck with it. Okay, right. But I just feel like I was just talking to my man John at the bank. I just feel like back then, like, songs really did have a meaning. Facts. Like, right now. Well, you still got some artists that'll get on some a song and the song means something, but like right now you just really going straight in. Mm. If you got bars, they fuck with it, they can pick some captions. You, you got it. That's real shit. That's facts. Um, what's your thought about the female rappers going crazy and do you have any music with any female rappers? Um, no, I ain't. I, I fuck with the female artists, but I ain't got. I got some old songs, but them motherfuckers will probably never come out, but mm. I fuck with the female rapper. For sure. Um, talk about learning the business and learning how to charge for features. What's your feature price look like now? <laughs> I, ain't, I can't say because it'd be different scope for different folk. I feel that too. Because, like, okay. I know how I feel to, like, need help. And like, so if somebody come to me like genuine as hell, like, cause you got most of, I be in, I be in DM like, what's your, what's your budget? Yeah. And they'll get on some shit like shit, whatever. But then you got some people who are real did keep on like, bro, I'm still paying bills, this, that, and the other. So it's like different scope for different folks. I ain't makes just sense. got no set, set price. Got you. Now that makes sense. That makes sense. Okay. Let's talk about some investments that you made. So is it true that you paid $30,000 for your teeth? Yeah. Talk about that process. I really, I went to Johnny. Okay. And like, I had like ten thousand dollars on me, but I think Johnny wanted that whole ten thousand up front. <laughs> I'm like, hell no, nah. in my head, I'm not telling him that. But I'm like, nah, I can't get it, man. That, yeah. Then I'm not even from Houston, so I'm like, Type I'm not shit. finna be out here broke. But then I end up calling Plug Geo. And I was like, what do I need to get you up front? Did that another he was just like throw me something. But when I end up talking to him and meeting him in person, I ain't give him nothing. He molded me, he finished my teeth in a week, seven days. He, he molded me one wins, the next wins the motherfucker was done. Mm. I pulled I, I flew back to Houston and this shit happened. For sure. Hell yeah, they look good. Yeah, appreciate Hell it. yeah. Okay, so um let's go back into Memphis. So What's your relationship like with other, you know, Memphis artists? I know a few of them you got music with, but what's your relationship like with the other artists in Memphis? I fuck with some of them, some of them I, I don't fuck with. So, like, but shit, I ain't beefing with nobody. Yeah. But yeah, like, I fuck with some Memphis artists. What was your last combo like with Pooh Shiesty? I, I damn it, I don't even ah, cause like, and and most of my songs I used to come like. Punchline, 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 punchline. Like, like, and he was like, bro, like, you hard with the punchline. He was like, but shit. He was like, give him a punchline and shit. Rap about, you know, mm. go go normal for a little minute mm. so they can be able to get that one. He was like, yo, it become a punchline <laughs> back to back shit. By the time they finally get this one, you done said three more. He was like, it's gonna be easier to, for them to learn your song and recite your song back to you. Like, so yeah, that was the last conversation. For sure, respect, man. Um, talk about losing, you know, Memphis rappers such as Gangsta Boo, Big Scar, of course, Dolph. Did you have a relationship with any of them? Yeah, Scar. Yeah. Scar and my brother, they brothers. My mama's son. Wow. And Scar brother. Mm. So they was like, they was like a brother. They was my dog. Man. And Gangsta Boo, like an auntie, slept in the same house as her. She was on the couch. I was in the background. A little chat house. Wow. wow, that's some real history right there. Yeah. Um, and yo ass, who is the king of Memphis? Me. Okay. Yeah. Period. <laughs> Big respect. Okay. Um, now, is it possible to still live in Memphis and how, thrive? Hold on, Luke. Back to that question, like. Yes. It, do we got to be a rapper though? Um, it does not have to, but. Do they got to be from Memphis? You asking great questions. I feel like when we talk about that conversation, the King of Memphis. Typically I say, I say, about, I say, head and Zach Randolph. Okay, why so? They helped a lot of 
people my age, like I done witnessed this shit. Like they done turned a lot of people who ain't had nothing into something. So I said, got to say head and Zach. For sure, salute to head, for sure. Okay, my other part of the question, is it still possible to thrive in Memphis and live there? Do you feel like it's necessary to survive or to, to lead to survive? No, cause like, I mean, shit happened everywhere. That's facts. Oh uh, so shit, it's just like, stand, like staying out the way and minding your business. Real shit, that's facts, okay. All right, now we know we got a project coming up for you soon in February, I believe, called The Pen and Paper. Yeah. What can we expect? This shit. Like, I got, I got real, like, I used to, like, just, I was scared to rap about the struggle, like, let people mm. know the real me. So, but on this joint, like, I'm real deal letting you know, like, what I'm still going through or, like, what, like, like what's going on in life right now. That's real talk. I stepped out my comfort zone on that job. I respect that. I respect that, man. Um, any features or producers we can look forward to hearing on there? Uh, I got really, really right now, I just got one, Kuja. I just got him, like, on most of the songs right now. But I ain't just thought about no features. For but sure. For sure. I might go Big Homer G, Fat. I'm gonna try to get a female on there. Please do, hell yeah, <laughs> that'll be hard. All right, so just for the people that want to know, like myself, like what's what's your favorite song or verse from your dad? Uh, I got to say Ryan Spinner's. His okay. verse on Ryan Spinner. For sure. I say my favorite verse would be after uh, the three six and uh, Remy Ma Pussy Got You Hooked. <laughs> See, I don't, I don't know about it. Really. Like, Ryan Spinners was just like, when I just, I thought my dad was the shit, I was a young nigga. Mm. Boy, like, Spinners was the shit back then. For sure. When they made a song about it, like, it went, it went crazy. Facts. And they were one of the first jumps, like, I really did. Fuck why you see it on 106 and Park and shit. I remember those days. Do people say y'all look alike? Yeah, but we don't. I feel you. For sure. So our show is called the Pla the Progress Report. So how would you say that you progressed lately as a person? Like I I know how to I know how to move now. Like I'm more consistent with the music. For sure. Like I used to just do shit, but like now I really just sit and think. Like, mm. like and I'm an overthinker, so I really get thinking of some crazy ass shit and make me not want to do what I'm thinking about, or make me want to do it. Like if it's a good thing. Yeah, I feel that. I feel that. Okay, so. What would you say, like, you know, give a piece of advice to, you know, some younger people out there that's looking at you and watching you, you know what I mean? Just some words of advice. Just, just don't never let nobody say you can't do it. Like, and if you want to do something, just stay consistent, go hard. Be the greatest at what you're doing. Respect, man. So what's coming up next besides that project? Uh, House on the Hill video. Like the audio already out, I got a visual hard. For sure. Hard. When it's gonna drop? We looking at Friday. Oh shit. Okay, it's lit. <laughs> yeah, it's lit. Well, man, I definitely appreciate you being open minded during the conversation with me, sure. man. You a cool guy, and I definitely look forward to just seeing you grow as an artist, man. Thank I you for skipping it. class. For sure. Thank you for having me. For sure. The Progress Report.